Hey everyone, so I am knocking out this third and final Q&A from all of the questions that you all asked me a while ago. So let's just get started. The first question is, how do you survive the cold while being ultralight? And I'm not technically an ultralight backpacker, not yet, maybe never, but I didn't have that much cold weather gear. So I think that this question applies to me and I think it's just really important to keep your base layers as dry as possible. So make sure you have really warm, like wool socks, something like Darn Tufts, and that you keep them dry. Maybe you have a spare a pair of sleeping socks to keep dry and make sure all of your like, I had smart wool, like thermals, like pants and a top all of that has to be dry and then just putting on all of my clothing if needed and just having a pretty warm sleeping bag I had a 15 degree for half of the trail and then a 17 degree uh, sleeping bag for the rest of the trail so just making sure you are making smart decisions with all of that and keeping everything dry and those little hand warmer things you know those pouches when they're exposed to air they heat up those are really helpful when it was very 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 cold because I would you know shove them in my shirt and in my socks and um, near my chest area and so it just kept me fairly warm but you do compromise sometimes on a lot of warm gear but it's a heavier pack so you just have to figure out what makes you the most comfortable what are some things no one tells you about through hiking that I wish I knew beforehand? And I think the main thing that comes to mind is how bored I got at parts of the trail. I think for me, I thought that hiking every day and that kind of scenery and meeting new people was always going to be exhilarating. And it's not, you know, you're doing a lot of the same things over and over again. And you're not, doing a lot of things so what I mean by that is you're just you know setting up your tent every day and taking it down every day and you're filtering water every day and you're walking every day and you're eating a lot of the same food every day and so it can get very monotonous and I got really bored and that was a huge struggle so knowing that beforehand I could have I think better prepared myself maybe had a whole bunch of whether books uh, podcasts, music downloaded, maybe bringing a little book or you know something that I can read or something to take my mind off of the boredom. I don't know, just been able to become more creative before I left. But you know, I got through it, but it was definitely hard because I didn't expect to be bored, and so that's just something I personally would keep in mind if you've never done a through hike that that may be something you experience. How do you sleep alone with the sounds of nature? And did I ever get over that? So I never got over it. You get more used to it, or at least I did. I remember like even my first few nights, even my dad, you know, sleeping in his tent next to me, little noises would freak me out. And then I realized months in when I was like by myself that the same noises didn't phase me because you just get really used to it and I know that a lot of times fear comes from the unknown. So at that point, it was very familiar to me and it wasn't an unknown. Say that three times fast. It was still creepy sometimes, even months into the trail, because you could hear when the sounds would be little critters or a larger animal. And a lot of the times it was like a deer that was breaking those little sticks that you could hear or you're hearing like an animal like walking outside of your tent. It's usually deer, but still you're like, is it a bear? Is it a bobcat? Is it a cougar? And is it a person? And all that sometimes gets into your brain. And so even like being with other hikers, we would, we would try to like vote who would have to get out of their tent and look at what it is. Um, or try to scare it away because it, it still is unnerving, at least for me and I know other people but it's a part of the experience and so you just do your best to use common sense and logic and understand that these are 
these animals homes like where you're sleeping is these animals homes and a lot of them are active at night and so you just gotta let them do their thing what is my favorite treatment of blisters so I know I've preached these a lot but the Injinji toe socks are incredible they really worked for me and the times that I did get blisters it was because my feet were not growing but they were swelling and getting bigger and so my shoes were too small and so I didn't have time to get a uh, bigger pair of shoes and so I got all these blisters but you know wrapping them with like mole skin and putting ointment on them like I love aquaphor so this isn't the best medical advice but for me I loved putting like aquaphor, aquaphor on my blisters and wrapping them with like mole skin but then also letting my blisters breathe and not get super trapped and gross all the time and cleaning it as much as possible like in a cold stream or something downstream of where people would be getting their water but just trying to keep them clean for sure and aired out but also protected from additional rubbing within my shoe but in gingy toe socks and big enough shoes it was really awkward for me at first to wear shoes that I felt were too big for my feet but through hiking like really inflamed my feet and so my toes and everything spread out a lot and so I was very thankful for having a bigger shoe so it didn't give me a lot of blisters like I was actually expecting. How much was I alone? And I'm pretty sure I've answered this before in various accounts, but I don't know, I hiked alone pretty much the whole entire trail. There would be little moments, I guess, like maybe a mile here or a mile there where I would be hiking with another hiker and usually it was because um, it was like on the way out of town or the way into a town, something like that. And then, you know, I, I camped with people a good amount. Sometimes, sometimes I didn't even know the people who I was camping next to, but um, I did camp alone as well. I was out there to do my own thing, and so I thought that it made my hike very um, personal and just what I wanted. So that was amazing, but also you have the chance to not really be alone if you don't want to. So it can go either way, which is another reason why I just absolutely love this whole thing about through hiking because you really can isolate yourself and be alone if you want to, or you can be around people as much as possible if, if you are interested in that. Did one long through hike make me want to do more? And the answer is yes. There is something about it that's addicting for a lot of people. Yeah, it's hard to get your mind off of through hiking when you've already done one, or if you've never done one but you've been dreaming about doing one, it's um, every day trying to make sure I'm staying intentional and present with the current day, even though I really do want to through hike again, and a lot of times I wish I could be doing that right now, but um, there's so many amazing things about just other things in life, so just trying to focus on that. But yes, I wouldn't be surprised if I did another through hike in 2020. <laughs> Where did I camp to hike Mount Whitney? And I camped at, I believe it's called Crabtree Meadow. There's a ranger station there. A lot of hikers camp out there, um, at least on the PCT side, you know, before they summit Whitney. The, at least when I was there, the ranger was really cool about us leaving our tents up and leaving some gear behind so that we can just basically turn our packs into day packs and then we can come back and to our tents already set up and maybe go to sleep, which is what I did. So I think I could be mistaken, but I believe that where I camped, it was about eight miles to the summit of Whitney and then eight miles back. So like a 16 mile round trip day. So not too bad. Do I have any poop tips and tricks? So hopefully this question wasn't for me to explain how to poop, but in the wilderness, always have wet wipes or toilet paper, whatever you use, ready. And I know some ultralighters really love to use rocks and leaves, but I'm not about that. I love a clean bum. 
that's like my requirement is like every other part of me can be dirty but I just want my downstairs to be clean and feeling somewhat respectable so keep wet wipes like I said or whatever handy like I would always have them basically in my pocket because like just that I could grab um, one for my bloody noses or my runny noses but also to go poop <laughs> because especially with through hiking at least for me my body would I mean you hear about through hikers pooping themselves a lot and that's a very common thing because when you need to go you need to go right then and so just take my advice on that and obviously trying to practice leave no trace I mean, me being there, I'm leaving some sort of a trace. Um, but if, if you can, really try to dig a good cat hole and make sure that your like feces is like really in the ground and then covered up because we just don't want animals like uncovering that and doing whatever with it. Um, I have dug up someone else's I'll call it their graveyard so maybe put like a rock on top or a stick or something and so other people may know like okay this is like freshly moved soil with a rock on top that's someone's tombstone or whatever you want to call it so don't dig up that because that was still one of the worst experiences on trail for me is digging up someone's fresh you know what so making sure we do that don't leave your toilet paper or your butt wipes really pack that stuff out even if you're in an area that tells you you don't have to in Yosemite you're supposed to pack out all toilet paper and all of that but I did it on the whole trail it's just those animals will love to dig that stuff up and eat it and shred it and just try not to impact their digestive systems as much as possible also I think going to the bathroom out in the woods is like the best thing ever because it puts you in the natural position to go so everything just works out very nicely so 10 out of 10 would recommend okay to piggyback off of the one of the first questions how did I deal with boredom and that's when I really started to listen to like podcasts and some audiobooks is when I was really bored so I try to listen to like nature as much as possible and not have headphones in and then when I would have headphones in, it would be for a small amount of time to listen to some music to just kind of get, you know, my energy going. And then later on, I start listening to podcasts. So I need to think of some better ways, though, because, yeah, it was tough even with podcasts. But, yeah, that's all I got. How much did the trail cost me? Well, I still don't know. I honestly do plan on compiling all of my data for my gear and roughly about all my food and like going back into my bank statements and like looking at everything because um, I am a nerd like that I just haven't had time but I wanted to write like a blog post up about it and just share it because it is a common question so I'm hoping to get around to that soon and then I will give you an answer <laughs> how did the trail change me well, this is a very deep question, and I know I've talked about this on various other videos and accounts, like on Instagram or something like that, but the short answer is the trail changed me mainly for the better because it really helped me realize how to live intentionally and purposefully which was very important to me before I started the hike, which is like one of the reasons why I wanted to hike was to help myself learn how to do that. I think it's really hard to say, oh, I want to live a minimalistic lifestyle and I want to act in a way with purpose and intention, but on the trail you're forced to do that because everything that you do has such a significant meaning um, or a significant result or whatever you want to call it because like whether it's eating or filtering water or setting up shelter or trying to figure out the weather patterns and where you need to camp because of that every decision you make is sometimes really important and a lot of times they're not that important but 
compared to like my life now like off trail they were still significantly more important so um, it just taught me what decisions I really needed to value and what things I could kind of let go to trust my instincts all of that and I think it really ignited something in me to want to continue to feel the way I did while I was through hiking about living life how I want and however I want and to just be good to people and all of that and I don't trying to like form how something like a through hike or just a massive experience transforms someone it's really hard because it's so incredible that sometimes there's not words for it it's almost like I just want to show you which is another reason why I love making the videos but it's like let me show you what I experienced let me try to show you how I felt because I don't have the proper language and it's just kind of like one of those cool things that I get to live with for the rest of my life now that I did that and I think about it often and it's always with me and like always at least in the back of my mind if not in the forefront of my mind and it still even affects how I interact with other people and decisions with like my career and even like going to the grocery store and figuring out what to eat and like what I want to put in my body it's been really great in all those ways and I know that's a broad answer but it's really hard to pinpoint all I know is that it did change me for the better it's made me less fearful but you know also still scared about just various things but more willing to face my fears and I think that's the biggest one for me and just living a life that I'm proud of and that I feel good about lying my head down on my pillow every night how much money did I save I'm trying to remember but I think it was about 10 grand and like I said earlier I'm actually gonna go through all of my finances but that's the number that sticks out in my mind because um, you know I, I had some like bills to pay and like a car loan and everything so I needed to make sure I had enough money to pay those all of that off every month like my surgery bill and my car loan how did I coordinate or plan all my resupplies and I didn't <laughs> so I just you know made sure that I could pretty much get food in any town some sort of food in any town and you you can I didn't have a stove so that makes it easier because I didn't need to worry about stores having fuel and I didn't really need to worry about needing like dehydrated food you know I basically could eat anything and um, you know some towns have less options than others and some of you wonderful people sent me boxes and so I didn't even need to resupply really and with that you know all I did was give you know the people who reached out to me a town that was a couple weeks ahead of me so that by the time they you know got it together and shipped it you know I had a buffer of like five days of when I would need to pick up the package a lot of post offices understand that these are through hiker packages and they will allow packages to be there for weeks but you know some of them do have like a strict policy like they can't exceed being there for two weeks or something like that or they'll send them back so you just want to time all of your resupplies um, so that you know you have a enough time to get there and the package will be there when you get there but also that you don't like over shoot and then your package wound up getting like sent back because you didn't make it there in time so it does take a lot of coordinating which is another reason why I didn't really want to do it but I saw people doing it and it worked out really well for them so you just have to figure out what you want to deal with <laughs> and the final question that people ask me a lot is am I going to be doing the Appalachian Trail or the Continental Divide Trail at some point and the answer is I hope so but to be honest I don't know yet I have a trail on mind <laughs> but you know we'll see how the snow year is and we'll see about my finances and just all my personal things going on in my life and hopefully I will be back on trail and if I do of course I'll be making videos to share with you all because it was so much fun <laughs> and 
that's about it. We finally did it. It only took three videos and several months, but um, I'm caught up so far and that'll probably be the last you know video of this nature for some time and I do plan on going to PCT trail days in August so I will be there and if any of you are there please come say hi to me and um, probably put together a little video from that just to reconnect with some other hikers and that will be so much fun other than that I'm just gonna be working and yeah who knows you guys um yeah hoping to do some traveling and some backpacking while I'm traveling and then be on a trail in 2020. Thank you to everyone who sent me questions or just commented and has just been an incredible supporter this whole time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you guys stick around and subscribe if you haven't because I do plan on being back. All right, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Even if the weather turns to crap later, this like little bit of a morning is literally the best I've ever had on the PCT. And it just happens to be on my last day. And I'm, I feel so thankful. This is stunning. This is seriously stunning.